Hey everyone, I am in the bathroom and what we're going to be talking about today is sealing the tub surround. So stay tuned. So if you're new to the channel, I just want to welcome you here and hopefully you'll consider subscribing if you like what you see. Also check out DIY Apprentice on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I post lots of pictures and videos on those platforms before I post anything on YouTube. And occasionally I'll post things on those platforms that I don't post on YouTube. Also check out the website at DIYApprentice.com. And don't forget to hit the like button if you like this video. So the bathroom project continues on. I have not done a whole lot of work in here recently. I'm trying to get this thing wrapped up as I keep talking about. So little steps of progress I keep trying to make as I go along. And so what I'm going to cover today is sealing up the tub surround. So what do I mean by that? Uh, basically, I want to seal up all the corners and any other areas where there's a chance that water can penetrate into the wall and causes problems later on once we get the tile installed. So let's jump into it. Before starting the process of sealing the tub surround, I covered the tub with plastic and 3M no residue duct tape to protect the tub and contain the sealant and waterproofing membrane application. All right, so let's start off by covering the areas we need to seal up in here, and then we'll tackle each one of those areas one by one. So around the tub, as you can see, we've got the tub lip. So we brought the backer board material down to the tub lip. We need to seal that up so we don't get water penetrating into the wall. Same thing on this side over here, both sides. Also down here by the tub, we need to seal up this corner, make sure we get that all nice and sealed up. Also, if we look around the wall board, we've got a lot of screw penetrations. So anywhere I've attached screws, I'm going to have to seal that up, make sure those are nice and covered. Also, any holes that are left over from when I move the screws, we need to seal those up. The shower valve right there, we need to seal this up because we have the backer board material exposed, so we need to seal that up. The tub spout, we've got the shower head right up there. We need to also address any of the corners like over here and on the other side, right over there. On the back wall, we've got a seam, so we need to take care of that. And then of course, around the window, we've, that's a very crucial area to make sure we get right. So we'll tackle that. And then over here, also the last thing is we need to take care of this niche right here. And you're probably wondering about covering the seams between the backer board and the drywall, both on the walls and at the ceiling. This subject actually deserves a bit more time, so what we'll do is walk through several scenarios in an upcoming video. Alright, so we're going to start by sealing the tub. So we're going to come over here, seal this corner up, all along there, along the back, and then back down over here. Because of the framing corrections I made and the plumbing that was moved in the right wall, I installed the den shield as seamless sheets on the left and right walls. This meant leaving a gap at the tub lip that needed to be filled. And right over here in this corner and then over here on the other corner, there's a bigger gap than I'd like to have there. So I'm going to have to fill that somehow. Uh, most likely I'm going to use something like a foam backer rod. I'll try that out, see how that goes. Okay, so this foam backer rod that I'm using is 3 8 inch in diameter. Stuff a little bit in this corner here. I'm going to cut it off about right there, I think. Alright, so I have a screwdriver. I'm just going to use this to kind of push that back in there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Alright, so I'm going to do that to the other side also. Alright, so I've got the hydro band adhesive and sealant that I'm going to use to seal up around the tub surround. You may choose to use 100% silicone. Now, one thing I know about this is that this will bond much better to thin set than 100% silicone will. That silicone tends to have a tendency to be a little slippery, so that's why I'm using this stuff here. You can see right there I've got an elbow on, and that is from this kit here called Super Nozzle 45. So I actually did a review of this, so I'll put a link to that video if you want to check it out. But very cool kit. You can see all these different extensions and elbows you get included with that. So very cool and very handy to have. So 
So this is pretty thick stuff, so that should help fill in some of those voids that I have, like for example in this spot over here. I may let this dry and then come back and put a little bit more in, in spots that I see where there may be a little bit of a void. But so far it looks pretty good. Alright, so on the back wall, the back of board material actually does come down and contact the lip of the tub. And that's because I was able to put two sheets on this back wall. Made a little bit of a mess of that there, but it should be fine. All right, so in this area, I want to seal this up also. I was going to use the Schluter Curdy mixing valve sealer here, but this is too big because I've got the shutoffs on this. So I'm just going to seal this up using some of the adhesive and seal it. That should take care of that. Down here, I may use the Schluter Curdy pipe sealers on this and also on the uh, shower head above. It's going to smear that around there. Just kind of run it around. So that takes care of the mixing valve. That was pretty easy. Not much to it. Alright, next we'll move on to this wall and I'm going to seal up a niche. So just around the seam here, there's a little bit of a chip right there we're going to have to fill later, so I'll take care of that later. Uh, that shouldn't be too big a deal though. Grab a putty knife. Now if you are using 100% silicone, you definitely do not want to get, this, get that on the face of the niche. That can be a little bit of a problem there. time make sure this is good okay so our niche is all sealed in all right so I'm going to seal around the window now so I put some tape up on the frame because I don't want to get carried away with putting too much sealing on here and have that be a problem later on I'm going to seal around here all around the backer board I may seal in the corners but we're going to put some thin set here later on anyway. I want to be very careful with that because I don't want this to be so built up that it causes problems later on when we put the tile in. So if I do put any sealant in here, it's going to be a very thin layer of sealant. I'm just going to do these last two corners and then we'll do the outside next. Alright, so while this stuff's still drying, I'm going to go ahead and pull the tape off. Alright, that looks pretty good. Alright, so we've got the corners done with a really thin bead of sealant. We've also sealed around the window frame. That looks pretty good. Nice thin bead of sealant. And then now we're going to go around the outside. Next, I covered all the screws with hydroband adhesive and sealant, and I hit the left and right corners with a thin bead to make sure they were closed up nice and tight.
All right, so now we're on to sealing the uh, corners with thin set and mesh tape and also sealing the seam on the back wall. I thought about putting some thin set on the edge here where I, with this joint around the window framing and also on the niche, but I've decided not to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is make sure I check to make sure there's no gaps. I see a little tiny little gap right there. I'm going to fill that in with some uh, caulk material. And then after I'm all done with that, I'm going to go back over this whole thing with uh, some liquid membrane. So I'm using Ladycrete Hydro Band as my liquid membrane. And I'll just go back over the whole thing and that should be good enough. Um, I don't want to create any sort of humps here. That's why I'm really hesitant to use thin set on these corners. And then on the niche, I actually talked to Noble Company to confirm since I have the sealant here already, all I have to do is go back over this with a liquid membrane and that should take care of that. Uh, you can use thin set and mesh tape, but again, I don't want to create any sort of a hump and that's why I am not going to be using thin set on these seams around the niche. All right, so here is the cement board tape I'm going to use. This is fiber tape. It's two inch and this is what's recommended for use with den shield this kind of tape. Uh, it's alkali resistant for use in mortar, uh, also ideal for high humidity environments, and it's self-adhesive. So this tape, I would not apply this before you're ready to actually put the thin set on because being self-adhesive, I could imagine that this would peel off over time. If, so if you set this up, like for example, a couple days ahead of time, you'll probably come back and some of the tape may have peeled off. All right, so I'm gonna put the tape in the corners first. And then I'll come back and do the seam on the back wall after that. I'm not going to overlap the tape at all. I'm going to try to get it really nice and tight to itself. But I really don't want to overlap the tape very much because I don't want to create a hump in here at all in any part of this tile job. So um, I'm going to do the corners first, then do the back wall with tape. And then we will get the materials and the tools and start applying the thin set. Okay, so I'm going to apply the mesh tape in the corner first. I'm going to start at the top of the wall and work my way all the way down. I'm going to get as tight in the corner as I can too. pretty good. I'm going to continue up the wall, just make sure it's tucked in nice and tight in the corners and we'll continue on with the other corner. All right, so now we're on to this side. Plastic putty knife seems to work pretty well. It doesn't uh, cause any sort of problems like tearing the, the uh, mesh tape or anything like that and it tucks it in nicely in the corner. So that's what I'm going to use going forward here. I guess but I usually hold it between two fingers like this and then cut it right there all right so this corner is done all right so uh, last up is the seam on the back wall tape on the corners, we've got tape on this seam, and I'm going to put some tape also up here around the window in the corners there too. See links in the description below. Comment, like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to check us out on social media. And thanks for watching.